Act one and act two like we can stop it. Yes, of course. 
cold. I feel pretty rocky, but I've got to laugh at that one. Then you can drink a whiskey. Yes, I guess so. Here you are, young fellow. Try a little of this. Thanks. Are you supposed to tell him? Well, ask him and find out. <sighs> thanks again. A uh, thousand thanks. You just put that in your pocket. You might need it later on. Thanks. So, you're McGee, ain't you? You're Mr. McGee? Right. Well, what's left of me is McGee, anyway. You expected me, of course? Oh, yes. We got Mr. Bentley's telegram, all right? But my name's Bentley. And so I surmised. And this lady is my wife, Mrs. Willoughby. I'm delighted, Mrs. Willoughby. Glad to meet you, Mr. McGee. You'll pardon me for not rising. Uh, really, I am terribly cold. Oh, well, that's all right. Just sit there and look it up. We've been living in the mountains so long, we don't mind the cold as much as strangers do. Even we felt it tonight, didn't we, Elijah? That's right. This is an uncommonly cold night. Uh, a little trip from the railway station to the top of the mountain taught me to firmly believe everything Jack London ever wrote. Everything what Dr. Cook ever lied about. So, this is Baldpate, is it? Well, well, well. Don't he tell from Yeah, an axe too. It's almost as mad as I'm sure. You say you received Mr. Bentley's telegram saying I would be here? Well, that's right. It only came about an hour ago. So we didn't have much time to prepare. I decided to come until 4 o'clock this afternoon. We were scared most to death getting the telegram in the middle of the night. I'm very sorry to have taken you out at night like this, Mrs. Quibbin. But it was altogether necessary in order that I accomplish what I've set out to do. Let me see. The rooms are above our, our group of fireplaces, I believe. Yes, I'm just fixing one up now. I'll start the fire too. I'll be ready for you in five minutes. Oh, I wish you would. Yes. No doubt it'd be too big a barn to work. I'll be more comfortable up there. He says he's not important. I wonder what it means. So come on, try to find out. Give me the matches. Here you are. This is, I presume, uh, the front desk. Oh, that's right. Well, well, well. This is an old John H. seclusion himself. You see, I do most of my work in the dead of the night. 
find I concentrate more readily than I don't. But I must have absolute solitude. Crack of the fire, the roar of the wind, the ticking of my watch will alone bear me company in all night. This all no doubt sounds very strange and weird to you. How's that? You can't quite fathom me. Well, you're an important thing. Dear Mr. Quibby, I'm here on a bet. On a bet? Yes, I have here <coughs> an explanation of the thing. That is Oh, <laughs> 
of you still feel that way about it, eh? Oh, your opinion's gonna cost you 5,000, old man. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll see. Do you want to talk to him? <coughs> You're just a mate. He wants to talk to you, Mr. Quimby. Is it Mr. Quimby? Yes, here you are. I sit right down. Hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. At 12 o'clock tomorrow? Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you, sir. We're both fine. Wait a minute, sir. I'll, I'll have to ask him. Do you want to talk to him? No. Just give him my regards. Tell him I'm spending his money already. He says there's nothing else, sir. Yes, sir. I understand. Good night, sir. He wants me to be here tomorrow night at 12 o'clock to talk to him on the telephone. It's very sad news you're going to invite him, Mr. Quimby. I'm going to win this wager. You know, this whole thing would make a bad story out of itself. I'm seriously considering using it for the ground plot. Oh, this leads to a player. I will at least do it to the saddle before we keep our wine in the sun. Have you the exact time, Mr. Quimby? Oh, mine says half past eleven. Half an hour or two, we'll get my bearings and find up a character or two for a start. Will I, uh, put these in your room? Uh, no, no bother. <coughs> oh, it's, it's no bother at all. Only two lads do anything for any friends of Mr. Bentley's. I'll say 
good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Quimby. And remember, at 12 o'clock sharp tomorrow night for Mr. Bentley's phone call. I'll be here on the minute. I'm coming to see if you're still alive. Or don't you think you'd be scared to death? Well, there you will be if you keep on like that. Well, good night, sir. Thank you, Mom. And good night, Mr. Quimby. Good night, sir. Hey, keep a sharp look out for ghosts and hermits. Lord, don't remind me, please. Oh.
If you don't tell me who you are and what you're doing here, I'll kill you as dead as a doornail. Come on, I'm in business. Who are you? My name doesn't mean so much, so you may call me Mr. Smith. What are you? A writer, a popular novelist. What are you doing here? I'm trying to win a wager by completing a story of Bald Pate in 24 hours. Although, a few more interruptions of this sort, however, and it's clear to see I'll pay the win. You can do me a favor, old boy, by leaving me this place to myself, but I give you my word of honor that everything I've seen or heard shall remain absolutely sacred. You must think I'm an awful fool to swallow that kind of talk. Very well, uh, if you don't believe I'm who I say I am, and you doubt I'm here for the reasons I gave, go upstairs into that room with the open door. Inside, you'll find a typewriting machine, several pages of manuscripts gathered on the floor, and a letter on the desk from the owner of the inn to the caretaker, proving conclusively that all I told you was the truth, nothing but the truth, and there you are. And you're not in with the police? No. I wish I were, if you were as good as they say it is. You say you have a letter from the owner of the inn? Yes. Hold on, I'll go get it. Wait a minute. What seems to be the matter? I've been double-crossed before, young fella. I'll find it if it's there. Very well. If you prefer to get it yourself, why don't I?
you know, these are the most remarkable lot of happenings. And no sooner do I get rid of one mess cell than along comes another, who died in the wool to be continued in our nest. You know, there's no particular reason for me saying this, but well, I really think I'd do anything in the world for you. I don't understand. But you promised to explain your presence here. Which I fully intend to do. But first, might I ask you a question? Proceed. How did you get in here without the key? <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I'm starting to think this whole thing is a setup. What do you mean? You have the only key to all made in existence, I suppose. So I understood. Well, if it's any news to you ladies, believe me. There are more keys to ball pit than you'll find in a Steinway piano. He lied! Who lied? Remember your promise, Mary! Well? I can't tell you his name. Well, at least tell me your name. Oh, I am Mary North. I do special stories for the Reading Star. Oh, well, the newspaper name, huh? That's it. And this lady is Mrs. Rhodes, with whom I live in Ruin, and is the only other person who knows I'm here to do this story. What story?
kindly offer you ladies my room, but as I must have some level of comfort for this work, and it's the only one clean and heated, well, I do apologize. Uh, good night. Good night. Mary, that's the sweetest name in the world. Thank you. <clears throat> good night. Good night. I still wish you hadn't brought me with you. Ah, good night. Good night. You don't believe Jim Carden guilty of any treachery. Tell me you don't, Mary. I don't know, Mrs. Rhodes. I told you of the suburban bride story we got last night, but I certainly hope the name of Carden is kept clean for both of your sakes. Can't be true. I won't believe it. But if it is true, it's best you should know it now. The fates may have brought us here tonight to protect you. Who knows? He said money's hidden in that safe. Yes, and that dovetails with the suburban ride story. He came down here to do a special. I just might get to Seuss with one sweep of the room. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'd be made. Of course, you thought you had the only key in existence. Everybody lied to you. 
Oh, there are keys and keys. I love my little key best of all. See? I can't understand it at all. You haven't anything on me. Just about two more keys, I'll pack up my paraphernalia and go back to New York and never make it up <coughs> so long as I live. Will you please tell me your name? Well, the name doesn't mean so much. So you may call me Mr. Jones. And yours? My name is... Listen. My husband is the president of the Rue National Suburban Railway Company. He's agreed to pay a vast amount of money for a certain city franchise. A franchise that Blue will probably have no power to grant. They're going to cheat him out of this money and use it with campaign funds by the title opposition party the next election. If he sues for his money back, they're going to expose him for entering into a deal that he knows to be nothing short of robbery. The president may have the bottom of it all. I ran to my husband's guy and begged him not to enter this little deal. He's being cheated. If he wouldn't believe me, but I know it's true. He'll be charged with robbery besides. That's why I risked him out on a night like this. I must have been followed before I was shot at his own. You should talk ball paint. I don't know who you are, but you're a man. And you can help me. You will help me, won't you? Yes. What do you want me to do? In that safe, there's a package containing $200,000. $200,000? $200, That's the amount. It must be there. A man named Bland was to come here at midnight and deposit it. And Collins to come and find it later. Carbon coming here. We so they planned it. You must have that money out there before he arrives. You'll help him, won't you? Don't you understand? My husband's been tricked, cheated, robbed. How we ruined. But I don't know the combination. Yes, there must be something we can do. Please, please, for the sake of my children, help me. Please. Oh, who are these women? What are they doing here? <clears throat> Wipe out the streetcar upon 
hat and the curtain crowd with one swing of hand. Just think, I'll save Mrs. Rose from the line to the feet. No pardons, Cricket. Always has been, but I needed proof before she break off the engagement. Great Scott, what a story, all right. Just think of how much this is going to mean to me. And to the city of Virginia itself. You, you will help me, won't you? Please, please. Yes. What do you want me to do? Call me Miss Perry. Can you think of any way to get into that safe? I don't know the combination. I haven't any dynamite. But I must have that $200,000. What's that? Nothing, I'm sure. Just the way it cracks. Go upstairs, Miss Norton. There's someone in this room. Good night, Miss Norton. Good night. Please, Mrs. Rhodes. Thank you. 
friends very much. So how's my work? Some runner, eh? Oh. I am sorry about this, Mrs. Rhodes. For your sake. It's best you should know, isn't it, dear? I suppose so, dear. I suppose so. Well, you gotta work fast, little girl. Here's the grab.
See that right now. 